Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we've got a really interesting piece of military surplus hardware that I just picked up and I can't wait to dig into this thing. But first we have to figure out how to transform it from backpack form into something more useful. So what we have here is a pedal driven backpack portable generator system. So this is our 12 volt generator. We've got this seat frame. So your army guy can sit on the chair and pedal away and power up a 12 volt radio or charge a 12 volt battery. We also have the original user's manual here and a little packet of cables and accessories for it. So this appears to be a British unit because it mentions uh, Bromley Kent. It's from 1953 and this is restricted information so we're not allowed to give this to the press. This is a charging set, uh, 60W15V, number 2, mark 1. And you can see this is a provisional uh, manual. They've gone in and just pasted in some updates to it. So the manual goes over the basics of the unit. It can be used either as this chair pedal driven unit or as a hand crank device. And then it shows this uh, rather 1950s looking army guy carrying the thing around. This guy here looks like he's ready to fight communism. That is a uh, very interesting dude there. So we've got uh, assembly instructions. We've got connection instructions. And then breakdown and transport instructions. And then we've got a circuit diagram at the end here. Let's see what's in this little pouch. Everything's still wrapped in this uh, wax paper, so this definitely has been opened, but I don't think it's been used much. We've got one packet of looks like electrical cables, and we have some other individually wrapped I think, tools here. Yep, um, very cool military issue wooden handled screwdriver. This screwdriver also appears to have never been used. It's still got tape on the end of it here. A uh, little box wrench, or I think in Britain this is called a spanner of some sort. Or maybe these are the spanners. Either way, we've got a variety of tools here, along with the power cables. On the actual generator unit, these pedals kind of pop in and out, so you slide them in for storage and out for operation. Uh, this has some information on it. It says a charging set, pedal driven, same numbers on it. We have a couple power terminals here, positive and negative. And we've got an inspection tag still on here, and this says it was last inspected in November of 1965. We have another little tag down here that's been ripped off. One of these will light up when we're at the correct RPM to be charging a battery, and I think the other one of these is just a spare bolt compartment. Of course, Donnie is over here trying to destroy vintage packing material. Hey, quit. <clears throat> I actually do want to save some of this wax paper and packing material, so I'm going to get it out of the way of the cats for now. This thing here is a desiccator. I think it's just filled with like silica gel crystals, or since this was the 1950s, it's probably filled with something terrible like radioactive asbestos, but who knows. Uh, it looks like you can open this up and replace the uh, desiccator stuff, and that will apparently dry out the motor compartment here, keep things from rusting internally. There is a little bit of rust and corrosion on the outside, a little bit of paint loss. Again, this is military surplus. This thing was probably actually used by the British military back in the 50s and 60s. We've got some gearing over here, so that goes from our pedal speed up to whatever the alternator speed is. And then according to the manual, this is actually a 12 volt unit. I was a little worried. I, I know the military likes to use weird voltages like 28 volts, but this is regular old 12 volt DC that everybody uses. You can get 12 volt car stuff, boat stuff, RV stuff. You can get tons and tons of 12 volt equipment, lights, batteries, electronics. So this is still applicable to electronics and electrical systems today. Now, I'm not much of a prepper myself. Uh, you might notice I have some fallout shelter stuff here, but this is just for display. This is just old artifacts I found at garage sales, and I live in a 1950s house, I've got a 1950s basement, so I've got some 1950s and 60s artifacts to show off. This thing fits right in. This is perfect for a bomb shelter display, a fallout shelter display, and I might actually take it out and use it out in the field. I do some ham radio stuff, I do satellite stuff, I do off-grid things out at Sandland, out in the desert, and other places. Um, this isn't super portable for taking on a plane on a long road trip, but 
it might be fun to bring this out to Sandland and power some radio equipment with it. Let's give this thing a shot and see if it actually works. Now I'm a little uh, nervous, I think I probably weigh more than the average 1950s British Army man, but hopefully I don't collapse this thing under myself. We have a couple power cables. This one appears to be just a little jumper to go from maybe a radio connector out to battery terminals. This one, uh, let's see, has the male version of that connector. And these are all covered in some kind of weird white dust that is probably giving me cancer right now. This one seems to have just regular uh, hook terminals on each end, so I think we could go straight from the motor to a battery with this guy. I'm gonna go wash my hands now. All right, I'm pretty sure we hook up red to red and black to black. Although with the British, you never know. They do like to drive on the wrong side of the road. So my little indicator light is not coming on, but the voltmeter says we're getting about 12 volts out. Okay, more like 13 to 15. It takes a little bit of practice to get the rhythm and the speed just right. The indicator bulb here looks fine, so I'm not quite sure why it's not lighting up. I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up a car bulb. Yeah, there we go. Now there is some kind of a cut-in circuit on this because I can pedal this and the bulb doesn't light up until I hit a certain RPM and then I can actually feel the resistance increase as the power starts going to the bulb. As the bulb takes the load from the alternator, it gets harder to pedal. So that cut-in speed is right about here. And now the bulb is lit up. And again, you can see how hard it is to maintain an even voltage. That bulb is getting brighter and dimmer as my legs go around. So this is not really good for direct connection to a radio or any kind of sensitive electronics. It's fine for a battery because a battery doesn't really super care if it's getting 13 volts and then 14 volts and then 13 again. I also don't know how good this would be for modern battery chargers. So uh, like those LifePo packs, those lithium ion phosphate, whatever. I don't quite know if they would appreciate having an inconsistent voltage like this coming into the 12 volt. Although they do have inconsistent voltages from solar panels, it's usually not quite that quick. When the sun comes out and goes behind a cloud, yeah, the voltage can drop down to 10 volts or up to 15 volts, but it's not usually doing it multiple times a second like this would be. So for a modern battery bank like this thing, I think I'll probably stick with just solar panels to charge it. I probably don't want to charge it with the foot pedal generator. Likewise, I'm not 100% sure if these little uh, standalone life po packs like to be charged that way either. Uh, I suspect I might want some kind of a more modern charge control circuit for this. Although maybe somebody in the comments can correct me on that. Maybe it's just fine to charge a little uh, life po like this with a hand crank or foot crank generator. Just to be on the safe side, I think for now I'm going to stick with regular old antique lead acid batteries like this guy. Or since I don't want to be cranking all week to fill that one up, let's start with this smaller model. I got this one from Axeman Surplus. This is a, well, who knows what it is because there's foam over the specs, but uh, it's definitely a lead acid battery. It's definitely 12 volts because we've used it before and I think it's pretty dead at the moment. Oh yeah, that thing is really flat. That's under 10 volts. I know it does still work. It does still hold a charge because I've used this recently, but it desperately needs charging up. All right, I can feel the resistance ramp up so we know electricity is going into that battery. And I do have the volt meter on there. I'm keeping it around 13 to 14 volts. I'm gonna see how long this takes to uh, get any meaningful power into the battery. This could be my new workout routine, although uh, we're gonna have to switch it around for arm day. All right, I've been pedaling for about five minutes and I've actually uh, started sweating. I'm very out of shape. And I've got it up to about 11.4 volts. If you have kids who won't stay off their phones and need to stay active, you can hook this up to a phone charger and then they have to pedal all day to check their socials. And we did actually get this light to come on. I just have to pedal until it has a load and then pedal a little bit faster and that red light does blink. We've been pedaling for about 15 minutes now but we've finally gotten this little battery from just under 10 volts up to just over 12 volts. 
This thing is definitely a workout. I can see why you'd want a buff guy in military shape pedaling it because, yeah, I'm drenched in sweat right now after just 15 minutes of pedaling the darn thing. It has quite a bit of resistance once there's a load on it, like a battery or a light bulb, so it doesn't spin as freely as just a regular bicycle going down the road. This is more like an exercise bike set on a pretty high setting. So yeah, it is a pretty good workout machine that also charges your batteries. The little seat here is actually fairly comfortable for sitting on and pedaling for 15 minutes. The cushion here is pretty comfortable. It's got these straps where your lower back goes. It's got this little pad here for your spine. And yeah, even though I'm a little larger than the typical army recruit, I haven't collapsed the thing under myself yet. So it turns out this thing is actually somewhat practical. It charged up this 12 volt battery and it gave me some exercise all at the same time. So yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this thing around. I probably won't use it on a super regular basis. Um, yeah, it could be a cool exercise bike, but I don't know what the life cycle on this is. I don't know how long it takes to actually wear this out. So if I wanna keep it around as an emergency power system or an off-grid power system, I probably shouldn't just use it all day every day. And Honestly, as an American, I'm not going to use an exercise dingus all day every day. Exercise devices in the U.S. are designed to just be thrown in a corner of your basement, cost you a bunch of money, and never actually be used. That is 99.99% of every exercise bike, ski machine, rowing machine, treadmill, and everything else that's sold as a gimmicky fitness unit. Either way, I think this is a pretty fun little gadget, and we're going to keep it here probably with the fallout shelter junk, just as a cool display, and then yeah, maybe we'll bring it out to Sandland, maybe we'll bring it out to some amateur radio stuff. But yeah, it's a cool thing to have. It's a great alternative energy resource along with solar panels and wind generators. Even though those are a little more practical on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm still a sucker for off-grid power stuff like this. Heck, we could even make some kind of pedal electric boat or train system, although that wouldn't be quite as efficient as just hooking a bike up to a train or boat. Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed getting a workout and charging my batteries with this thing. Stay tuned to see if we end up doing anything else with this. And of course, all my other random radio, electronics, and weird surplus junk discoveries. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.